There we go. Good afternoon, Councillor. How's it going? Well, good afternoon, Sean. It's going, it's going well. It's going very well on this rainy, rainy day. Although I will say we need the rain. It is spring. Right. Yeah, not so bad. We need a little bit of rain, but the weather's yeah. okay. Tulips are up. Hy hydrangeas are up. Sorry, not hydrangeas. <laughs> I can't remember what they're called now, but they're beautiful. They smell beautiful, the flowers that are coming up. <laughs> So we'll get into, yeah, we'll talk about some talking points happening in Waterdown and then we'll get into the kids questions, if they came from kids or not. Or oh, and I love that. I love that we're, you know, that, uh, and, and I'm hoping that uh, there, there is a young, a young person that can actually ask me a question or two if you could arrange that, that would be great. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so let's go, there's, um, to start off, there's gonna be a couple of road closures in Waterdown, right? Center Road, as well as Waterdown Road. Right, so I'll start with Centre Road and, you know, the uh, the infamous bypass that uh, was long approved a long time ago, I think between two th 2007 and 2014, very complex, lots of provincial studies had to be done, you know, it, it finally got uh, approved, the route got approved. And I know folks have been saying that it's never going to be built, it's going to be 40 years before the bypass is built, well guess what? Construction is starting in May. Uh, this is now, what is this? April 29th. So it's going to be starting within the next two weeks. The first thing that, uh, that will be constructed will be a new intersection on Centre Road. And so effectively, um, Centre Road will be closed between Nesbitt and about 500 metres to the north. So there'll be no through access. It'll be completely closed off for three to four months. There'll be a whole new intersection put in there. There'll be new sewer lines, new water mains, new culverts, um, paving, of course. And it will connect to uh, Waterdown Drive, which the bypass name is really Waterdown North Drive. So it is currently constructed behind um, uh, behind Nesbitt, if you went north of Nesbitt, so that'll be finished constructing coming up to Centre Road, new intersection with stoplights, etc. And then it will carry on east to go behind uh, Alexander Place and connect with Parkside Drive at the tracks. Parkside Drive will be widened to four lanes and there'll be boulevards, bike lanes, new sidewalks. There'll be uh, a new stoplight intersection at Robson Road and then it will connect to Avonside where there will be a traffic circle put in uh, and then at Avonside to, to Dundas. So the road will be closed for three to four months. It's a construction site, so weather permitting. Hopefully it, uh, Santa Road will be, uh, that intersection will be done within three to four, four months. And then the rest of it will be under construction for the balance of 2021 into 2022 with a schedule for completion, uh, hopefully by the fall of 2022. So there will be lots going on. Uh, and if, to get access to Joe Sam's Park um, and access to St. Thomas Church and Guardian Angel School, there will be detour routes mapped out to use Robson Road up to the fifth concession over to Parkside, oh, sorry, over to Centre Road and then down to uh, all those locations. Um, there's a letter going out to residents probably within the next week or so. And uh, for the residents that actually live on Centre Road, there will be some access maintained. For those that are in the North Lawn Hunter survey, um, that uh, uh, North Lawn access will be cut off. They will access through Main Street um, through that cul-de-sac mm -hmm. and connect into Summit and then still have access in there. So it's going to be a lot going on. Great. And then also Waterdown Road, right? Summer, this summer? Oh, Waterdown. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> like we don't have enough construction going on. Waterdown Road, um, and, and this is a Burlington project because the boundary for Waterdown, Flamborough, and for Burlington is Mountain Brow Road. And so um, Waterdown Road will be closed at Flat and Waterdown Road. Halt Region is putting in a very large new water main uh, because there are 500, I think 550 new homes being built on Waterdown Road where you see all that uh, agricultural area. 
Um, that has been slated for development for at least 20 years that I know of. And in uh, talking to uh, Councillor Ke Calvin Galbraith in Burlington, who I work closely with, um, that is uh, all, all going to start within the next year. So, and Waterdown Road itself will be widened on a four lane base. It'll be widened to three lanes and that construction will be going on in 2022. So lots happening. We know for years that it's been coming, find a new route, find a new way. <laughs> we don't have a lot of choices. We have Snake Road, we have Highway 6 and we have Brant Street. Right. Uh, and unfortunately, that's that's the way the town is made up. So, you know, but it will be also worth it when it is done. Interesting. Yeah. Or the new development, is that going to be part of Burlington or part of Hamilton? That's part, that's Burlington. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So Flat Road, which is uh, about a little, a little more than halfway down Water Down Road, right. when you get down where the big curve is, mm -hmm. there's a little street off to your right side that goes off to the west, and there's a school there. Mm -hmm. That's flat road. So that is where Water Down Road will be uh, shut down. And there's been some construction going on in the past few months. They've been uh, moving all the services that, of course, are underground, you know, such as your cable and, and bell, um, uh, gas, union gas, right. that kind of thing. So they've been they've been moving that they've been taking down trees and really preparing that whole area for the construction that is that is coming It's kind of the pre-construction mode. Okay, let's talk about a couple of transit. Um, first, um, the on-demand transit for Waterdown. I'm so excited. Yes, yes, yes. I've been trying for so long to get some innovative transit going in the city of Hamilton and, you know, uh, offered up Waterdown as, to me, a perfect example of let's get into some new transit technology. Let's, you know, let, let's find an area where we can do a pilot and uh, give the people what, you know, what uh, I think will work well with Waterdown and that's called on-demand transit. So it uh, has been approved for a one-year pilot. It does not mean that there will not be any buses or that the bus route is going. Um, we will still have two buses that are running bi-directionally uh, tying into, well, tying into the GO station, don't know. <laughs> There'll be an alternate route it has to take as Waterdown Road will be closed. But the on-demand uh, will start in September. And in July, we will start promoting um, some online training and some, uh, uh, what do you call it, outreach to residents. So we can do some virtual training. We're going to have some public meetings and um, you know really explain to people how it works there'll be an app on your phone and uh, you can you can call for a bus and schedule uh, on your phone the date and the time that you want pick up and where you're going it comes to your home it picks you up uh, the whole idea is that we use smaller smaller vehicles not necessarily a bus but we use a smaller vehicle and um, yeah, it's really, it's quite exciting. And I think it's gonna be quite successful, especially, especially hearing from young professionals. They just love the idea of being able to, you know, every day you gotta to go to work at a certain time and go to a certain destination. And if you can con call the bus up on your, on your app or the vehicle to come pick you up, take you to work and do the same thing at the other end of the day when right. you need to go, not, when the bus is going to be there, I think it just, just makes perfect sense. Yeah. Like it's a no brainer, right? Like it's, it's kind of where, like with a, perhaps a different app that's out there that everybody's using, why not get City on board? <laughs> yeah, well, and that was, you know, that was the whole thing. Um, and, and, you know, part of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities uh, boards and committees that, that I'm, I'm on, it's an organization that is right across Canada. And, um, you know, at many of our, our meetings, this is what uh, has been, is being looked at and considered on a national basis is for smaller communities and, and, and areas within big cities looking at this kind of on-demand transit. And, you know, we have, um, we have some really good local vendors located right, uh, you know, in, in our community and their Niagara is, is certainly using that it's I think they've had it about eight months now hugely successful the demand has gone up like crazy uh, for transit users so 
you know, to me, what it's going to do is really connect um, people into the business parks, into the new jobs. We have over 3,000 new jobs coming in the next year to Flamborough business parks. You know, like it's taken six years of hard work with uh, staff and myself, um, staff in economic development, getting these big businesses to commit to come here. So this way, it gives the businesses access to the employee base that they need, and it gives the employees access to get to those jobs if they don't have cars and, you know, uh, the bus route, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I'm quite excited about it. Very exciting. And then the proposed uh, BRT along Dundas Street. In oh, Wales. that's the other one. <laughs> the one going, I'm assuming people hooking up right with the, the furthest <clears throat> point of the um, subway. Yeah, so Kipling. Right. Uh, Kipling? Yeah, I believe it's going all the way to Kipling. So yeah. I had a meeting with um, with Metrolink staff. Oh, what's today? Thursday, earlier this week. And, um, you know, again, this is something that 10 years ago, I started talking to them about getting the go train or the, sorry, the go bus to come into water down. And there didn't seem to be much interest. And then a couple of years ago, they contacted me, you know, because I just kept hounding them and hounding them over the years as I tend to do. <laughs> and they contacted me and said, so we have another idea. Um, what about a bus rapid transit that already, uh, you know, exists between Kipling and I'm, I'm not sure how far, I think into Mississauga, mm -hmm. and to better service the Oakville and Burlington area, they're looking at extending the BRT into that area and they said why don't we you know look at hooking on water down and we can you know put in hov lanes on dundas street now this is going to be strictly on dundas street right. okay um and it makes sense because if someone works in toronto and they're along dundas or north for them to take the go train out of aldershot and go into Etobicoke or Mississauga and then try and get onto their transit system and get up north to where they work, you're looking at two and a half hour travel, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can if you can have the BRT on Dundas Street, which you can then access to get to your job, uh, you're cutting it down to, you know, about, uh, about you know, 50 minutes to, to an hour and 10 minutes, something like that. So I think it's a lot more palatable. Yeah. And it's just, we need to get people around in a more efficient manner that uh, is going to be cost effective as well. So I'm thrilled to bits. Um, again, there's going to be public meetings. There's going to be more information coming out. They're right now assessing where the stops could be. Obviously, we can't widen anything through the center of town, but the bypass will be finished. And so they may look at routing around the bypass and connecting back up to um, uh, to Dundas Street on uh, like coming down Hamilton Street, have a stop there and then head out to Highway 6 into the business parks. Okay. And they're even looking at potentially the BRT going down the hill and connecting up at McMaster University. Hmm. Interesting, yeah, getting people moving around. Yeah, yeah, it just makes sense to me. And then, you know, of course, the drum that I keep beating about the BRT in Hamilton instead of that other little toy train they want to put down the center of King Street and Main Street. If they did the BRT, then they could truly connect, uh, you know, effective, efficient, um, great transit system going right down the center of Hamilton and connecting to all the communities. We could run a line up to the airport, which by the way, Hamilton Airport, and a lot of people don't understand this, it is the busiest cargo airport in the entire country of Canada. Well, that's interesting. It is the busiest. It's a 24 seven and they move millions and millions of shipments. The new Amazon plant is being built up there. Okay. Um, Panatoni, it, it's just cargo jets, got their new uh, plant is up there. It is humming. You go there at two in the morning, you would not believe all the action going on around there. It's really quite phenomenal. Well, and yes, I have been there at two in the morning. <laughs> it was clear, I was too, I remember. <laughs> I remember um, those days of traveling. Yes. <laughs> Sadly. Um, uh, that's a uh, watered down secondary plan. 
What's the update on that? What's going on there? Yes. Yeah, so again, very, very pleased. The secondary plan has been in the works for about a year and a half now, and it's usually an 18 month to 24 month process. Uh, what we did do was included within the secondary plan, which is looking at the core community of water down and basically saying, what do we want it to look like? What kind of construction do we want to see? What kind of build do we want to see? Three story limits put on the core. Do we want to have eight story limits to 10 story limits put on Hamilton Street? What do we want to see constructed? How do we want to see the town of Waterdown evolve over the next 20, 30 years? And it's, that's a really, really important planning process to do because once you do it and you put it in place, then somebody can't come in and say, I want to put a six story building on, um, uh, sorry, I'm getting on, mixed up here. Uh, on Dundas Street, Dundas going through the core of Waterdown, right? Like at right. Main Street, so they won't be able to do that. So the update on that is that um, it will be coming to council for approval in uh, September, October. There's uh, two more community meetings planned for it. We've already had uh, two meetings, three meetings, three, three or four meetings over the past year. So uh, I'm really looking forward to getting that done, getting it passed by council, getting it in place. And so, you know, there's no more blindsiding of, of buildings coming in and wanting to be built that really shouldn't be there. It looks like the there's a new for sale sign on the old fireworks building that everybody keeps asking about. It's now for sale again. I don't understand that. I really, I, I don't. I, I, as far as I knew, they had their site plan. Um, oh. So I don't know. I mean, it could be a personal thing with the yeah. property owner there who wanted to develop it. I have no idea. It's ready to go. Um, you know, so. Interesting. Yes. Let's talk about uh, the interim uh, control bylaw. Yes. So uh, because of the secondary plan um, not being, you know, coming coming to council in uh, in September, October for final approval, um, I had put in play an interim control bylaw last year in May, and it was good for one year. And what it basically did was prevented anybody from coming in and tearing down a house or tearing down a building and putting a new build up or doing any building that, um, you know, if somebody wanted to buy property and rush it through before the secondary plan came into play, um, you know, there was that worry that something like that could have happened. So the interim control bylaw came in and it is set to ex expire the end of May. Um, and I'm not going to extend it or have it put back in play for another year because the secondary plan is coming forward. It will be voted on and, you know, that will be coming forward within three or four and there is like there isn't time for anybody to buy a piece of property or even if they've bought property come in and get their permits to do any any building that wouldn't be allowed in that area so you know i think i think that's it served its purpose and uh and i'm i'm, I'm pleased to see that uh you know there are folks that that are waiting for that interim control bylaw so that they can do some renovations to their to their homes in the core and then uh, let's see the radon gas homes safety ran or random not radon random radon no it is radon Ra yeah radon. Oh, not okay. random gas radon, radon gas, <laughs> radon <right>. gas. <laughs> <laughs> well and and um, you know kudos to a couple of my residents who brought this this whole um, worry about radon gas forward uh, quite a few years ago. And um, radon gas happens, uh, you know, everywhere within a building. It, it is just the fumes that are that are given off from construction materials, from wood, from, you know, uh, hardwood floors, from, uh, you know, everything within a house. And what uh, it's important to get it tested. And I've I've had it in my my last couple of e news, and I've had two or three residents actually email me and say, thank you so much for putting that radon gas article in because they actually decided when they read it, oh, I wonder, and they went and uh, they had their house tested. And it, it was at dangerous levels. You don't smell it. It's invisible. You know, it, it's kind of like a carbon monoxide, but it's not that. Okay. Um, it, it, it can cause cancer over years. It's not, it's not going to put you to sleep and, and you know, then you're gone. 
it is uh, it can bring on cancers and all kinds of horrible diseases that you really don't need to deal with. And it, and it, and it is over time. So please get your house tested. It doesn't matter if it's a brand new house or if it's an old house that the gas is is constantly coming out of all of the materials within your home. Um, so there are acceptable levels and you can get detectors and you can get it tested. And then, you know, there are experts in the field who will let you know how best to deal with that. So good information. Now we're going to we're going to take a pivot, turns things over. We're going to do um, kids and teen. Questions. I love this. I love this so much. And, and thank you for coming up with that idea. I'm really hoping that uh, maybe your daughter could ask you. Yeah, hey, press. Come on over. She's in school right now, but she's going to take a break. Well, I think this is a really good uh, lesson. This is a really good teaching opportunity for her. <laughs> you say hi to Councillor Partridge. Hello. Hi, Presley. How nice to see you. So we're asking, so she works for the city of Hamilton. Actually, I work for you, Presley. I am your government representative at the city of Hamilton. And you've met me a couple of times. Thank you so much, my dear. So I actually work for you. And I understand that there were some questions posted on Facebook and um, by some teens and some young people. And I was hoping that you would be okay with asking me um, a question from you. Yeah, so press. Can you like, um, get like one of those like zip lines that's in like, Memorial? Spencer Smith. Like Park. Spencer Smith Park in a memorial and also an arcade. So a zip line like Spencer Smith has and an arcade? Yeah. Do you have a timeline like right away or? <laughs> no. Anything else? No. All right, let's see what she. Oh, has. the zip line. Presley, can I just ask you the the, the zip line? It, it, did you say it's at, at Spencer Smith Park? Whereabouts? It's Spencer Smith. It's it's like a mini zip line. Like you hold it and you go. Yeah, there's like a seat. Like, there's like a thing you sit on, and there's like a thing, and then you just push yourself, or so, your parent can push it for you, and then you just go. It's not high up or anything. It's just. Like, is it is it part of the playground structure? Like part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. Do you know what? Thank you, Presley, because I'm going to take that back and, and ask staff to investigate. I'm always looking for ways that we can, you know, do something a little bit different at Memorial Park. So, you know, your feedback is just so important. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And the second one was the arcade, right? Yeah, because I really like arcades, but whenever we go to an arcade, we're always going to like farther away places and it takes me now is this arcade indoors or outdoors or indoors i like indoor arcades because of the, i don't know any elk, elk, outdoor arcades <laughs> well you know what there are some there's um one of the things that we're looking at right now in fact we're just entering into negotiations with the school board for a new rec center with a pool to be built in water down and i'm wondering if we we could do some sort of an arcade idea within the city portion of the building. What would you think about that? Maybe like it could be added in like that building or maybe the Y or like. Like well, we were looking at building a separate building with a swimming pool in it for everybody in Waterdown to use. Would, would that, um, you think that'd be a good idea? Mm -hmm. Like in the same building with the pool? Yeah. So you can like pool arcade, pool arcade, pool arcade. <laughs> oh, and a rock wall. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, a climbing wall? Yeah, yeah. I, I would love that. <laughs> yeah, good, good question, Press. Thanks. Thank you, Press. Presley, I really appreciate it. You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm brave. <laughs> Oh, wait, well, thank you for spending your break with me. I really appreciate that. <laughs> and um, some other people have asked some other some questions, questions too, right? My four-year-old would like to know about the park on Nisbet. Oh Lord! <laughs> a few times before. <laughs> and you know what? I I really, um, especially with COVID, I just I feel so um, it's so frustrating for families and especially for young people. So I thank you for that question. And, you know, it really, 
I don't know why the developer is not developing that park. Um, they can certainly do it. You know, when they started selling all the homes up there, the promise was that there would be a park. And I'm not seeing a park so far. I'm seeing a field with an awful lot of weeds in it. And it's about, you know, it is half of the park, right? No, oh, sorry, did she say the one on Nesbitt? Nesbitt, yeah. Like oh, Nesbitt, okay, sorry, no. So that developer has, you know, again promised me that it would be under construction and they would build the park uh, this year. They said it last year as well. So, and they keep saying the city's holding it up and, uh, you know, staff are saying we're not holding it up. Don't know what their issue is, but uh, I think it's, a, it's an excuse that's getting extremely tired and uh, quite frankly, doesn't hold a lot of uh, credibility as far as I'm concerned. Is that builder building any more in Waterdown? Is there any repercussions for that builder? Unfortunately, they are building. Um, they are building more, they own the land and they get approvals and they are gonna build some more. And you know, um, there's not much we can do about it. It's their land, it's private land. Then, it's very frustrating. I, I just I, I just find it so disingenuous. I really do. And then somebody says, why is there not a community center for the residents of Waterdown? But it looks like so drum roll. <laughs> uh, so as I was just saying, and you know, um, I can't I can't give away too much information. But you know, again, I have um, been wanting to get um, and working with staff on getting a public pool, again, for probably six to eight years. It takes a long time to get these projects on the books, you know, three to five years to get them into the budget process and then to actually get them uh, get them made or built. But uh, in this case, um, we have just entered into discussions with the school board to potentially build onto um, one of their schools. Could be a new school, could be an existing school and um, so we're, we're working together to put a funding package together. And uh, yeah, I'd really like to see a brand, a brand new pool and, uh, you know, potentially with an arcade in it. Not promising, Presley, but. <laughs> a zip wall and a rock climbing wall, zip line, like just it. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, just add it in, add it in. Yeah, but we, just... de we, we need a pool. This community deserves a pool. And, you know, I, I mean, years ago, I was on the board at the YMCA when the first idea came forward under the, gui the guidance and leadership of Scott Haldane, who was the CEO at the time, to enter into a partnership with the former town of Flamborough to build a YMCA with a pool that could be for uh, community use, et cetera, et cetera. So the city owns the land and the YMCA built the building and their donors. And so that's how it works there. Um, you know, the success of it is is just unprecedented because you know they've gone they've outgrown the membership that they have in there. They have a hard time, um, you know, meeting the needs of their membership, let alone meeting the needs of the community. So it is time that we had our own pool. And then uh, somebody else, since we have so much land at the park on Spring Creek, why can we add a splash pad there, perhaps? You know, I would I would love to see a splash pad at the one on Spring Creek and also Agro Park in um, in Mountain View Heights. And the, so the challenge there is that uh, there is no infrastructure in the parks underground. There are no water connections. And so without water in the park, you can't have a splash pad. And a splash pad isn't cheap. They're about five hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars. Like they're they're quite expensive. So again, trying to get that into the budget process is, you know, and I am working on it, by the way, three to five years. Um, we can't do both because it's a lot of money. And, um, you know, right now uh, the city is, is spending over $70 million uh, on our new bypass road. And we've got the bridge on um, Dundas Street, um, just east of Mill Street. That bridge is going to be coming out within the next two to three years which will shut down Dundas Street for about eight months. And I mean, we've got some heavy, high cost infrastructure items going on. Um, and, and you know, I, sadly, when I hear people say, you know, we pay high taxes and we do, our taxes are way too high. I pay 10,000 a year, like they are way too high. Um, 
And I hear people say, you know, we spend all this money on taxes and we get nothing for it. Please, that is so not true. There are millions of dollars being spent in Waterdown um, and in the rest of Flamborough too, but the bulk of it is in Waterdown. So, you know, your, your taxes are going to good use within your own community. But I agree, they are way too high. Oh, sorry, that's my doorbell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's okay my husband speaking oh of, it's an online delivery <laughs> oh, right. that's good <laughs> speaking of taxes somebody asks why are homes so expensive in waterdown do you yeah, have they were just talking about this I know, can we ten, the 10 year old wants to know why will his son be able to afford a home in waterdown in 10 years from now tell him to buy now <laughs> So parents buy now and do the investment and then your children will have a place to live. Basically. You know, I, 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 would, I, would, I would like to say that yes, they will because one of the things that uh, is so very important, um, yes, homes are, uh, they are expensive here. Here being Waterdown, Carlisle, Frealton, this whole area, Flamborough has some of the highest um, real estate prices in uh, the entire city, but but the city of Hamilton itself has gone up. I think it's like 38% or something yeah, that the value the of the year. homes has really jumped up. It is so, homes everywhere are expensive. Uh, Oakville, Burlington, and, and we are kind of, you know, Flamborough is more in line with those prices. Um, Ancaster, Dundas, yeah, man. So your prices are high, but here's the thing. We've also been very fortunate to be able to attract very high paying employers. So we have Stryker, we have L3 now here, you know, L3 is going to be opening their doors at the end of this month. And instead of the 900 employees that they originally had when we first landed the contract with them, they have just informed me about a month ago that they're going to have 1400 and their engineers and their technicians and their, their high paying jobs. CHCH with their new studio, we've got WPE, we've got Liberty Engineering, which has bought a separate building that they're gonna double the size of as well as their original building. So they're going, you know, and, and they're worldwide. These companies are worldwide. So in answer to the question, we've got high paying jobs here and hopefully the young people will be able to get these jobs. Um, and we also have some new developments coming, which for young professionals now, you know, they, they don't want the homes that we have necessarily. Mm -hmm. You know, my sons are in their late 20s, early 30s. They've got great jobs. They sure they love their home, but they don't want to live here. You know, when it comes to actually buying something themselves. Um, you know, my oldest son has uh, just bought a, a condo last year out in, in uh, Vancouver. And I won't even get started on the cost of that. But, you know, it's, it's, right? like, it's, could... it's a lovely condo, but it's small. Right. It's like 800 square feet or 900 square feet. And it's a two bedroom. It's lovely. It's got a balcony. That's the norm out there. But that's what his age group wants. Right. Especially with the new like the like at highway five and six, like there are some possible developments in the future. If you get walkability, you get condos, people live in them, they walk to the store, they walk to the mall, they, or they walk to work, they can yep. go on a hike. You don't yep. need the car and let's travel an hour for work. Yeah, and well, and that's exactly right. You know, I mean, neither neither of my sons, they, they're they in their, their uh, you know, in their condos, their cars don't move all week because they walk to work or yeah. they or they cycle to work or they run to work mm -hmm. you know they and that is more what young people want to do rather than live in the big homes um and you know it doesn't mean they're not going to have the big mortgage right. for a smaller place but they're more connected to their community in terms of access walkability trails we've got some great developments coming mm -hmm. uh, for seniors as well as for young people that uh, you know are going to be more walkable and uh, more trails and more connection to nature and more connection to things that they that they really want within their own neighborhood and that's very important when you look at planning because you know it, and even if you look at it through a climate change lens 
because we've made a commitment in the city of Hamilton for, you know, to, to address the climate change uh, issue. Sprawl does not pay for itself. Mm -hmm. We pay for sprawl. Developers don't pay for sprawl. They have development charges, but that doesn't cover the cost of everything. But the more space you have between buildings, the more effect there is on climate change. Right. So, you so know, it, it, it just- what every city is looking for, right? Density, you've density. got to have that density and, and connectivity um, and, and, you know, and, and look at things through that climate change lens, even in terms of the type of materials that you use to build. It is just so very important that we, and I'm committed to that. I am absolutely 100% committed to addressing that issue. And I sit on the planning committee and, and we look at every application that comes in. And one of the questions I always ask is what materials are you looking to build with? What is this going to look like? Is it bricks and mortar? Is it going to have stone? Is it, you know, is it going to be all pavement or is there going to be some permeable surfacing? Because permeable surfacing is extremely important uh, so that water can travel down through the surface as opposed to doing the runoff because the runoff is just, you know, that ends up in the sewer system and it just costs you more money. So, so we'll, we'll get the SkyTrain from Toronto to water down, right? Is what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> All right, good stuff. A couple of years, we'll be fine. Just a couple. Yeah, just a couple. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to chat about that you'd like to bring up? Um, my gosh, we've covered so much. Yeah, you know, well, we really well, have. Well. But, and, and I just want to say to all the young people out there, the teens, you know, I really, I appreciate engaging with you. And, and uh, please, you know, I want to do this again, and uh, and I want them to ask their questions. I'm I'm surprised I didn't get any questions about, you know, about the environment and 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 about uh, parks and and about trails and more connectivity. So, uh, um, but I'll look forward to that perhaps next time. Sounds like a good one to do next time. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, you're doing well. Everybody's okay. Everybody's doing well. Yeah. I'll okay. Doing good. Thank you for your time, Counselor. Yes. Thank you, Sean. And uh, thank you, everybody out there. Take care. Bye.